Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. This is Asim, and today we are going to talk about Shodan Dogs. Shodan is a search engine for Internet of Things. I have talked about this in on my Twitter. There was a thread where I talked about seven of these specific dogs that can help you find some of the very cool stuff online. It would also help you find in like help you in bug bounty, like there are a few of those that would help you find Jenkins server or maybe Grafana dashboard and things like that, which are sensitive to our company. So I'll be showing you a live demo of those and how you can filter out some of the noise from these by applying multiple filters and trying with that. So if you have a laptop, make sure you log into your Shodan account and just follow me along. Yep, with that said, let's get started. So here we have the Shodan page. This is the thing what is Shodan. The thing that I experienced Shodan is search engine for internet connected devices. This is the tweet that I, I was talking about. Uh, I posted on 27th March. Let's go through it one by one. Before I start with this, this is the search engine page and I've already logged into my account. This is the search string I already put. Uh, let, let me just, just follow me for a while. So this, the first one is search for secret API keys publicly exposed on websites. Searching for Slack API token on all websites can. So just copy this one, paste this one here. And next. So there are two things to understand here. What is this http.html and what is this xoxp hyphen? So here you might get uh, 14 results you got. You can go to these web pages and try to see. So except this can continue and you might see something here. So yeah. So the two parts are first is the http.html. In this filter reference, there is this page. I would add the link in the description. There are the different kinds of filters that you can use on you know, the Shodan search. There's this examples. You can see this example. Just click on the search thing. It would automatically search for that. You can go through this. It's a, it's a summary version. Not every filter is being shown here, but yeah, it's good enough to understand how this works. So I've been using this HTTP.HTML and XOXP. If you go and search for, um, what do you say? Secrets. Um, regex pattern, let's say truffle hog. So you would see, um, I think, yeah, you would see in this one scripts, truffle hog, Truff oh, I think you would already find the regexes here. Uh, where is that? Profile log projects. Uh, yeah. So yeah, on this report, find a lot of these regexes. Regexes are basically patterns. Let me just show you here. So for this Slack token, usually the token starts with XOX and then there's this PBORSA, one of these characters. Then there's a hyphen and then there's a zero to nine, like numeric number, which is repeated 12 times. Then again, there's this hyphen and the same thing. And like, this is a pattern. Usually this is the pattern, the keys are. So the very sure thing that was there was the XOX. And then I chose one character B here. So you can choose P, A, Q and all those also and try to search for those as well. So here also get 10 of those. So let's say if I go to this and maybe I would find some keys here. So search in this. So yeah, here is this token thing. And notify bot text message and all those kinds of things you would find. So yeah, these are live keys and so you should be careful. You should report it without like trying to exploit those things. So yeah, this was about the first filter. Let's quickly go to the other one. Uh, there's a search using fav icon hash. One of the most accurate ways of finding searches. So fav icon hash is basically this the, the, this logo you think Twitter logo that's the fav icon of this particular website same goes for the Shodan you see the fav icon for Shodan how you can figure this out just open this like source code for this and search for favicon so if you see here you can see the fav icon fav icon twitter.icu and you see that this is the icon the same way go for this if you go to this and search this uh, favicon.png you can easily find that this is fav icon 
so why this is important is because a lot of the hosted services let's say jenkins website and all those things they also have fire icon and because they have a dashboard so you can easily search for these dashboard and these dashboards are important because these are usually like hosting some sensitive sensitive information for the company so that's why we are going to try to search for and try to search for these dashboards using this fire icon so this five icon hash is basically they compute a string or an integer for that particular icon so that it can easily be searched through it because you cannot do like image search that's not very easy but if you compute a number for that particular image you can easily like compare when you find that next time so one of these hashes is this one this is for jenkins and i have found quite a few success using this so let's say this is also here i think fab icon hash here. you can easily see this fab icon hash i think in the no not in the example so you can see 81000 jenkins server some of these might be public some may not so you can just go and search for these yeah this is a sign in one so there is a way that you can also like just look into this slide you can see 403 forbidden right and 403 forbidden should like be what do you say is it like should be skipped as well and let's say uh Yep. That's it. Uh, there, there's a list of five icon hashes for some of the common uh, services that are available publicly that that are usually sensitive and maybe uh, the company is hosting it on their server and that is public that you can use Shodan to search for. So this is the repo for that. And it has Shodan five icon hashes dot CSV. So yeah, it has 604 lines. So basically 604 different services. Uh, there's this headers, more info if you want to have any other info. CN Serval, C Atlassian, Chain Point. So what you would have to do is just copy this one and instead of this value, just put it this one and you would find Atlassian product that is available online. So system dashboard, system dashboard and all those stuff. Uh, except this can continue. So usually these are like open source projects or projects that you can host internally. Yep, you can try to find some misconfiguration into this and then look for that and maybe try to like see if you can bypass those because there, there have been a lot of misconfigurations in Jira recently. So you can try to use that to exploit it to your advantage and like report it to the company to get those resolved. Let's come to the third one. Search using websites title. Uh, it's again the HTTP dot title filter. Let's try this one here. Um, Let's try this one here. Oh, sorry. I think I closed this one, sorry, my bad. Let me close this one. So you can see the Grafana dashboard. So because each of these services, Grafana services, they have this Grafana in their title. Like for example, this particular has Twitter on their title. This has uh, Grafana, let's say. This has GitHub has GitHub on their title. So same way goes for this Grafana dashboards. They usually have metrics for the internal of the company and that might be sensitive and it may be public or they might have the default credential. So you can try for that. Let's come and see uh, that time when there were 90,000 results, it's now 89,000. It goes on fluctuating and such. You can also add a filter like uh, let's say country and you can filter on the basis of let's say country India and only the Grafana dashboards that are in the Indian subcontent you can search for that while it's going on let's move on to the fourth one search services vulnerable to a par particular CV so uh, example search for all machines vulnerable to eternal blue so th this is the like filter that you would be using so you can see that for country India there's only 1900 results let's try this uh, CV search MS17010, it was a very popular one, Eternal Blue, because it, it was very easy to exploit at the time it came. Uh, yeah, Eternal Blue SME. So even Metasploit has a ready-made module. You can use it to try to exploit this uh, Windows SMB remote Windows kernel execution code. And you can just use this one. And yeah, just set it out and try to exploit. If it's vulnerable, you would straight away get administrator access, if I remember, to the remote Windows machine. So yeah, MS17010, that was the name. There's one thing that I want to talk about is that, uh, let's say for a particular CV, not every CV is there, but yeah, 
uh, there are there are lot of a lot of popular series are there which you can directly search for and what happens is when shodan searches these devices online it basically tries to figure out whether that particular like what is the version of the service and then co- correlating it with the database of exploits it figures out whether that is particularly vulnerable to this particular cv or not and that is how it categorizes it sometimes it might not it might be a false positive so that's why you need to manually verify it also um yeah this is only available to users of higher api plan so on as a free user you might not be able to get it for a, i think there is one pack where you can like for pay 50 dollars for lifetime and you might be able to get access to this the number of search results would be limited but still i mean that's good than having nothing there so yeah search for a particular port plus service ssh on port 22 let's say if i want to do for this so let's say i want to just first try with this just i want to search for ssh services and yeah you can just write ssh there and let's say so we get 20 million uh, machines that has this ssh so we might have see that you can see this ssh thing the the header kind of thing that comes out when you like send a ssh request so that is something there and that is how it's try to like uh filter those and categorize it into the search results let's say i want to only search for ssh which has machines which has port 22 as ssh service or port 3333 so let's try this so now there's 18 million of those and let's say if you want to like remove port 22 because a lot of these like intelligent maybe uh companies who are a bit smart they try to put ss on not the default port which is a good practice so i would to put it as hyphen port 22 so only search for machines that have ssh but it's not on port 22 so now you see that it's now only 1.9 million so yeah that's how you would categorize it uh there is this result that it was 18 million 18.4 million last time when i posted this and when i removed that that it was 2.2 million so it fluctuates that's what i was trying to say search for particular os so you can also have this filter is this os filter and particular version so you might ask ac why this might be important so this is important because this particular windows version would be vulnerable to a particular let's say internal blue or something so this windows 10 home 19041 so if this is because i know that this version is vulnerable to let's say a publicly available exploit so I'll just look into this and there since there are 132 133 results we'll try to go through it one by one and maybe report it to them ki by very like waiting whether it's actually vulnerable or not so that would be a way to go for this so that's why a particular windows particular windows version is also good you can also search for linux kernel particular linux kernel one of the very common uh, exploits that's available for linux is dirty cow but you need to have a temporary or a non root account onto the machine to run the dirty cow exploit and like some other uh, things also needs to be there but yeah that's a very basic thing so that's a privilege escalation thing uh the last one the last step that i mentioned on that day was this combining filters to get more targeted results let's say country india and windows 7 so i already showed this one but let's just try it again so the what do you say the matter the ordering of filters doesn't matter you can put country first and us later that doesn't matter here they also have screenshot so i mean if it's a like if the machine showed and search crawlers are able to take the screenshot it would also do that it's in bhopal madhya pradesh this is one of those there so if you see here uh, what do you say there is this some other filters for screenshot has screenshot through rfb disabled port something like that so you can just copy it and put it here uh, so yeah if there is screenshot and what are different so there were two screenshots i think this was very targeted one you might want to just have has screenshots and then you might want to see how many of those have screenshots there's 932000 results there's this camera so this these are some of the things that i was sh- trying to show to you uh oh sorry copy um port 88 and uh i don't want to 
secure connection i think that that's fine with me there's some login id or password there's 554 port uh, let's try this one because i see that the screenshot is from the 554 port uh, which is normally used for personal firewall cancel request for protection try So yeah, that's pretty much about it. Hope you enjoyed it and make sure you try these, specifically the Jenkins one because that is something I have found a great success. Once you get access to a Jenkins server, try to get some console logs because some of the time, some of the companies, what they do is they have some secrets log into that. So that would be pretty much useful for you. Yep. Have a nice day.